Hello there, Lawrence Grayson back again for shortformvideo.com and in today's After Effects tutorial I'm going to show you how to create this rather funky tarmac title effect. Now uh, as always I'm trying to avoid uh, the use of expensive plugins so you'll be pleased to know that this effect can be done really really quickly and easily using the standard toolkit in CS3, CS4 or CS5 or even CS5.5 like I'm working with here. Um, you may also be pleased to hear that it's also procedural, so uh, you can make any changes you like to the original logo. And they'll all be reflected in the final project. So uh, that's what we're aiming for. Let's get started. So we want to create a new composition, and we'll call this Tarmac Texture. As always, I'm using the uh, 720p preset, um, but you can use anything you like. And uh, the duration doesn't really matter because it's essentially we're working with a still image here, but I've set it to 10 seconds long. And uh, background color of black is also handy. And just hit OK. In this new composition, right click and select New and Solid. And we'll call this Tarmac BG. Make sure it's the composition size and select black as the color and hit OK. Once you've done that, go to the Effects and Presets panel and find your Fractal Noise effect. And We're just going to drag that and drop it onto the Tarmac background layer. Now you'll probably be very familiar with the Fractal Noise effect. It gives you this uh, slightly cloudy um, look by default. You can actually change that into a Tarmac effect really, really quickly. So. Uh, Change the fractal type to turbulent smooth. Change the noise type to spline. We're going to increase the contrast to about 125 and drop the brightness down to about minus 20. But the real trick here is found in the transform setting. So twirl those down and change the scale from 100 to 5. And immediately you get this rather funky tarmac effect. I might just uh, drop the brightness down a little bit further, maybe down to 30, just to get some of the highlights out of the way. But other than that, it's pretty much done. So uh, just to tidy things up, we're going to select the uh, Tarmac background layer. Hit Control shift and c to pre-compose. And we'll just make sure the Move All Attributes into New Composition is selected, and just hit OK. So now we need something to go in the frame. So create a new composition, we'll call it Logo Placeholder. Make sure it matches up with the uh, composition settings from your earlier composition and just hit OK. Now you can put anything in here, it could be um, a logo, it could be text, it could be an image, as long as it has an alpha channel, um, meaning a, a, a transparent um, element to it. Um, or you can do what I'm going to do now, which is create something from scratch. So with the Type tool selected, I'm going to create some type. So we'll just call it Your Logo here. Now before you ask, I'm using Rockwell Extra Bold, which is one of the standard um, typefaces included in the installation. Um, but you can use anything you like. Um, obviously with something like this, the heavier it is, um, the better it works. It's another quick tip if you didn't already know. If you select any layer in CS5 or CS5.5 and hit Control and Home, It'll line the anchor point of that layer up to the center. And if you tap the apostrophe key, you'll bring up the uh, title safe guides, which means by holding down shift and using the cursor keys, you can just nudge it into a very central position quickly and easily. So apostrophe gets rid of the guides, and that's our logo placed. Now, as you can see, I've already selected a yellow color. If you're looking for something kind of you know, muddy and slightly dirty, Now we also want um, something that looks like road markings here. So uh, to create that, I'm going to create a brand new solid. I'll call it road markings. Actually, I should have changed the color before I did that. So uh, just going to select the road markings layer and hit Control, Shift, and Y to bring up the solid settings again. And with the eyedropper, I'm just going to select the text color just so that they both match up. Now obviously this is not what we want. We need to create um, a kind of hashed effect, which is uh, pretty simple. So the road marking selected, go to your effects and presets and find your grid effect. 
And you could just as easily use the shape tool and create a bunch of shapes here. Um, it's entirely your call. So in the effect controls panel for your grid, change the corner point to width and height sliders. Now we're just going to get rid of the uh, horizontal lines. So type in 2000 into the height value. And we'll get rid of that final um, horizontal line just by adjusting the Y value until it's off frame. Now you can leave the, uh, the color the way it is for now. Um, I'm going to increase the width to about 70 and the border to about 60. And finally, I'm going to change the blending mode to stencil alpha, and that'll basically just cut those lines out of the uh, the color, um, the solid color we've got underneath. Now, obviously, that's not finished. I just need to do a couple more things before we call it done. So, with ro road markings layer selected, um, hit down Control Shift and N, and that'll create a new mask. Then hit Control and T to bring up the transform properties, and we're just going to drag the uh, bounding box handles down to the top and bottom of our logo type. Now with the road markings layer still selected, hit Control Shift and N again to bring up another new mask. Tap M to bring up the mask properties and with the second mask selected change that from Add to Subtract. And again hit Control and T to bring up the transform properties and we're just going to bring in the bounding box from the left and the right. And that's our logo pretty much finished. So we're going to roughen this up a little bit now. So to do that, create a new adjustment layer. Select the roughen edges effect and drag that onto the new adjustment layer. Now have a play with this, um, depending on the, the look and feel you, you want or the you know, the, the style of the logo you've got in the middle. You may need to play around with this. I'm going to take it up to about uh, 15 in the border value, just to really roughen it up a bit. Now the next thing I'm going to do is add a fractal noise effect to the adjustment layer. I'm going to increase the contrast to about 140, and in the blending mode I'm going to select Multiply. That'll just give us those uh, areas of light and dark that we're looking for like it's a kind of worn out um, effect. Now I'm actually not too happy with the grid so I might just um, pop into the road marking setting again and we'll maybe increase the width to 100. Possibly a bit more. Okay, we'll make it 120 and leave it at 70. Okay, that's just made a little bit more road-like. Okay, so we're getting there. Back to our tarmac texture composition. Grab the logo placeholder that we just created and drop it on top of the tarmac background layer. Now, it doesn't quite look as though it belongs anywhere yet, so we'll change that by right-clicking on the logo placeholder, going to blending mode and selecting add. And what that will do is allow all the... Uh, the bright points from the texture underneath to come through and that automatically adds that textured look that we're after. And you'll also notice that the, uh, the darker areas um, of our logo are now looking worn out and they're showing, showing more content through them. Another thing I'd like to do is just right click on the logo placeholder, go to layer styles and select bevel and emboss. Now we're just going to turn down the, uh, the depth to 1 and that'll just give us that subtle feeling of um, thick paint on a tarmac surface that we're looking for. Okay, so we're almost done. Just a few things to uh, really finish this project off. I'm going to create a brand new adjustment layer. Now here's a tip that was passed on to me by a, um, a viewer in the last uh, tutorial I did. If you want to create an elliptical mask um, quickly and easily with the layer you want to mask selected, just double click on the ellipse tool and Bob's your uncle, you get a, a perfectly matched ellipse um, mask. Now I'm going to swap this mask from Add to Subtract and I'm going to drop the Fast Blur effect on top. 
Now in the fast blur properties, it's going to take the blurriness up to 15. And you can see that it gives it this um, selective blur effect around the top. And just to weather that in a little bit, I'm going to hit F to bring up the feather value of the mask and just increase the feather to about 150 pixels. And that'll just uh, taper the effect off and give it that nice kind of selective lens blur effect. Um, something else I'd like to do, add a new vignette, so I'm going to create a new black solid. And we'll call it Vignette. Same thing again, double click on the ellipse tool, it'll create an elliptical mask. Change it from add to subtract. Hit T to bring up the opacity value and we'll drop it down to about 60. Hit F to bring up the feather value and we'll feather it out by about 80 pixels. Or you can leave it like that, or you can right click on the uh, layer, go to blending mode and select classic color burn. In which case you might just want to drop the opacity down a little further. Down to about 25%. And if you want to uh, offset the logo, because it's looking a little bit regimental right now, I'm going to select the logo placeholder, tap R to bring up the rotation value. And we'll just swivel it around a little bit, maybe to 11 degrees. Just tap S to bring up the scale and enlarge it. So there you have it, um, a really easy tarmac titles effect. Um, again, the project files up on my website, so if you don't fancy doing all the hard work yourself, just go to shortformvideo.com and grab the project file. Now, word of warning, it is actually a CS 5.5 project file, so it's not going to work with anything except for CS 5.5. But uh, that's it for now. I hope you found it useful. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.